I've been a member of the Tower Hamlets Cycling Club for I think about two years now. Um, I really like it because I really enjoy cycling along the canal, different parts of East London and I enjoy the company each Saturday as well. I don't take part in any sports. And why is that? I think, well I've tried to, I know there are a lot of facilities out there but I haven't really, maybe because of the costs, I haven't really took, um, signed up for it or the time or because you're so busy. I just started uh, playing football once a week with a bunch of Muslim girls. We just meet up casually um, in a park near Harrow and just have a bit of a kickabout. It's nothing too competitive or fast-paced. It's just kind of learning football skills, basically. I take part in Zumba classes and yoga classes. I've always kind of intended to go swimming or intended to do like um, do like badminton or tennis. So I'm interested in doing it, but I just never get to doing it. And why do you never get to do it? I well, mainly it's time and money constraints. Because I went to a girls' school, it wasn't so much difficult as, um, as it is now, because nowadays, especially in local areas, there's been lots of mixed classes, whereas myself, I would feel more comfortable in going to only girls' classes, so it's quite difficult finding an only girls' Zumba class and an only girls' yoga class. I go to ladies' swimming, and sometimes they have like male lifeguards, um, so I can't go then. There's a running club run by Mile End Leisure Centre in the stadium, and I really wanted to go so badly, so I got the kit out, I, my jogging bombs, anything as baggy as I could, so I thought it would be only women's, and it'll be late, no one would see me, and it's winter. And then I went there, and the stadium was packed, full of men, everywhere. Everywhere, and I was like, I can't do this. I felt like really self-conscious then, and I ended up saying, forget it, I'm not gonna bother. I didn't really take part in sports after school, like once we kind of dropped PE, it didn't really cross my mind, although I really enjoyed things like basketball, but it just wasn't really readily available for me. So um, then at university I tried again, and it, like that was a bit difficult because it was an all-girls team but a male coach, so then I couldn't really participate in that either. And then after I graduated and came back to London, I tried to find kind of all-female Muslim, well, just all-female sports groups really, and even that was difficult to source. I would wear my headscarf and I'd wear more loose clothing. I still wear my headscarf and stuff and, and, and find it comfortable enough to run around in and that. Anything that kind of doesn't really skin tight or show the figure. Clothing for me has been an issue. For example, like swimming. Um, I'd rather just wear just a swimsuit, but sometimes uh, you know, I have to wear the leggings. When I've been to swimming pools, it says you have to wear shorts, whereas that wasn't the case like five years ago. But I wouldn't go into a swimming pool if I have to wear shorts. I'll wear leggings or three quarters, but you're not allowed to wear that. One thing I would really like to buy that kind of prevent in terms of difficulties as playing sports is the burkini. Now, the burkini is a lightweight fabric. I think it caters to the more modest if you want to be more modest in terms of your swimming. And it's lightweight, it has like a skirt, kind of long top, and um, a leggings and a cap that kind of covers your neck and your face, your, your, your hair and your neck. So it, it, the only problem is it, it's, it's expensive. I haven't worn any sportswear designed for Muslim women because I haven't really been able to get my hands on it. Um, I've been looking for a burkini for a while now because I'd quite like to get back to swimming. But again, the ones I found are upwards of £80. Pounds. Um, it's just not uh, very affordable for someone who's on like a student budget like I am. I would buy the Islamic uh, dress for swimming um, if I needed to. Yes, I would consider buying it. I haven't worn any caps of sorts, but I've heard of the sports cap. It's designed by this Dutch designer called Cindy van den Bremen, and it's like a sports cap that kind of um, has a Velcro neck um, fastener, and um, it's like kind of made of a woolly fabric. It's for running, um, jogging, kind of, instead of you wearing your hijab or a bit a thicker fabric, it kind of caters to, it kind of fits in all the areas that you would like to be covered as a Muslim woman, so say your neck, if you wear a hijab, your neck and your hair, so it kind of, kind of keeps that all intact. Having somewhere nearer me, because like I live in North London, and so Harrow is fairly accessible, but like other things I've tried to take part in before have been all the way in West London, so it's like an hour's worth of travel. To make things easier, it would be better to find on, for there to be more only women's classes, because there didn't seem to be as many as there should be, um, especially as there, there is quite a high demand for them. My key issues are obviously time, money and clothing. So for time, and money, there's not much you can do, I guess. But um, the clothing, 
I guess the recent design and fashion and stuff have kind of worked around that, which has helped. And obviously, a de a, like a further development in that would obviously help. I've only found one facility that has actually um, that actually does cater to all the needs that I want. Um, it's a kickboxing. It's a kickboxing session run by um, a Muslim reaper, and um, it's Fulham. I think it's Fulham, and um, it really does. It's really cornered away. It's only women. There is, there's no, there's no fine print that you'll find some guy just kind of waving back near the window, or you'll be on your. Because I've heard stories where girls have been on their treadmills in sports centres, and it's women's only hours, and they find men walking straight past them, and they're like, oh my god, like I'm, I'm exposed, and they're going to see me. But yeah, I've only found that facility, but it's a price. I don't, I don't think I can afford it right now. Just having something a bit more casual, I think that the things that are set up are quite formal as, as it happens. Like, or the things that I've come across anyway, like once you sign up, you're immediately signed up for like six weeks or whatever to play as part of a team. Whereas if you just kind of manage to rock up every week and just um, play around with a bunch of girls, it's quite casual, um, kind of like no stress, then that's what would make it a lot easier for me, I think. I actually used to live in East London in Leighton and that's the reason why I used to come to the Tower Hamlet Cycling Club. Um, because it's, it's got quite good rates of pay, it's not very expensive. But I've also moved back to Kent now, but the reason why I continue coming to this one um, is because I like cycling with other women. Sometimes I think men can be competitive. Um, also, I can wear what I want here. Um, I don't have to wear anything like weird spandex type stuff. I don't want to wear that. And it's quite relaxed in that way. And some of the cycling clubs in Kent, I haven't actually checked them out yet, but it just seems there's very much a sort of pub culture that they're going to go cycling, go for, you know, drink afterwards, and I don't really want to be part of that. So, um, or you know, have to decline their you know, invitation. So it's just a bit more relaxed and, and chilled out being in this one. And I made friends here as well.